What I'm presenting to you today is our new top tier wireless product called Axiant Wireless, which we see right here. It's got a fully loaded rack of all the Axiant products. Now, I could honestly spend, you know, an entire week going through some of the things because it is many, many steps forward in terms of, you know, development and so on and wireless technology. There's a couple of things that I want to uh, focus on in particular that I think really take Axiant, you know, many steps forward than what we've seen in the past. I think all of us have heard about shrinking spectrum and you know changing spectrum regulations whether we're in the UK or across Europe or you know the Americas and everywhere you know the reality we face is that the shows are getting bigger year on year whether it's you know idols and x-factors or rock and roll or theater but on the other hand we have less spectrum to operate in so you know we have a demand for more wireless channels but less spectrum to put them in which causes an obvious dilemma and then there's always the potential for interference you know what do you do when you have that mic on stage that's absolutely crucial to you and it drops out you know that's never an ideal situation if it's a high profile enough event I mean that could cost somebody their job so a uh, couple things on here first on the spectrum allocation side of stuff uh, Axiom certainly improves spectral efficiency uh, on so many levels so one of the things is always to be able, we want to try and cram as many channels into smaller parts of spectrum. In terms of Axiom, not just on the receiver end, so the receiver selectivity, we've built in seven stages of IF filtering into here, so the receivers are able to push away anything that's close to it. And on the transmitter side of stuff, the actual linearity, so you know, if you were to put it through a scope and have a look at what the carrier looks like in any intermods, it's virtually non-existent in terms of what's over there. So what that allows us to do is put significantly more channels into a small amount of spectrum than was previously possible. You know, as a reference, UHFR, which is a widely accepted industry standard performance, um, what, whatever we're doing with, and the reason I like to quote numbers is there's too many variables, like what antennas you're using. You know, it does need an RF specialist to get this, but you know, we're regularly seeing people put 14, 15 channels into a single TV band. Um, you know, we're taking this 40% beyond that uh, and it's a you know it's a great answer for production companies that are able to you know carry on making the large shows uh, despite all these changes going on however some of the real innovation in Axion comes from what you've probably seen in uh, the brochures where it talks about Axion is the first wireless system of its kind that not only detects interference but actually can do something about it Axiant transmitters and receivers, unlike traditional radio mic systems that we see everywhere else, these transmitters and receivers have a real-time data communication with each other. So I'm able to, in real time, adjust first off any parameter off of this transmitter. So, you know, some of the simple examples here, I'll just put it through the speaker so we can hear it. I'm able to go into the transmitter adjust menu and actually adjust the gain of the microphone in real time. So this is previously not possible, you know. Let's suppose we've mic'd up a, a performer or a theatrical performance. This performer has gone on stage, the belt pack is hidden in a wig or somewhere, you've sent them on stage and you go, the gain's not set quite right. The only thing we can do today is call them back, take off the costume, take the pack off, change the gain, probably sync it to a receiver and send it back on stage. It takes a lot of time, uh, probably causes stress, certainly not an ideal situation and in the worst case you might not even have the chance to call them back so you're left with a less than ideal situation with a transmitter on stage so I'm able to adjust the gain in real time and this is the gain of the microphone this is not the audio output of the receiver this is the actual gain of the preamplifier going in here I'm also able to adjust uh, the RF output power I'm able to remotely lock transmitters so power lock frequency lock or I'm able to take simply the transmitter offline as well but the most impressive function and feature that we can obviously control is the frequency of the transmitter. So just to put it into a real life uh, scenario here, a function of these receivers is called interference detection and avoidance. So the receiver is able to detect interference but then actually able to do something about it. So once again in comparison to more traditional system, if we get interference, the only way you know about it is, well, you hear it drop out, you know, or your meters jump around a little bit. So what I'll do here is I've set interference detection avoidance into a prompting mode. So as you can see, I'm on 661150. Somebody wants to see this, they can, but what I'll do is I'll purposely interfere with me. I'm gonna to go to 661, that's 150. So I'm gonna go about 75K off, so 225, which I know will cause me some grief. So 661 at 225, and there you go. So I've just caused interference with me. So the receiver, telling me, hold on a minute, we've got interference on this channel, what do you want to do? And obviously, Mike's dropping out, you know, the engineer starts to panic at this moment. 
what you do currently is you would run on stage probably with a spare transmitter and hopefully coordinate with the camera guys you know when can I get this on what can I do in the prompting mode I've got three options I can ignore the interference in the hopes that I know what the interfering device is I can manually choose a new frequency or I can simply hit switch and the receiver and the transmitter simultaneous and instantly go onto a clean new frequency so this is a prompting mode. I'm now going to do the same thing, but in an automatic function. So we're on 642050. 642150. So here you go. We're live on air. Worst case scenario, you'll see what happens on there. It briefly tells you you had interference, and the interference has been resolved, and the microphone is still on air. Um, so this is naturally something that I suppose is completely impossible in terms of radio mics that we've all been hoping that is doable and uh, as you can see that's an absolute seamless change of frequency so that's your worst case scenario that's your Brit Awards that's your you know Super Bowl halftime that's your Wimbledon Awards ceremony you know and the microphone something goes wrong with it it's fixed in an instance you know and if like I said if it's a high profile enough event that could cost somebody their job literally you know you might not be invited next year um, and the last bit of uh, innovation I just want to touch on here is the recharging system for Axion. I think for years radio mics have been yelling for a reliable rechargeable system. We're used to seeing dry cell, you know, the format of dry cells, but the chemistry of those is no good. It, you know, horrible memory loss effect. You always have to discharge them before you recharge them, and that's why the pro audio industry more or less has rejected rechargeables. Axiant rechargeable cells are custom proprietary lithium ion cells. Think of these as a MacBook laptop, you know, laptop battery. So I can use these, I can pop them into the charger, top them up as you, know, as you wish. There's zero memory loss effect on these because the chemistry is lithium ion. Each one of these guys also has a smart chip built inside of it that relays this information the whole time. Current battery life status accurately down to 15 minutes in hours and minutes. So once again, take a standard current radio mic system. You put in a new set of dry cells. You've just done your you know, sound check, gig starts. You put in the dry cells, you get two bars. What's two bars? Two hours, three hours, four hours? We don't know. That's why we swap them around so you've covered yourself. These will relay the back, uh, battery information accurately down to 15 minutes. So if it says four hours and 45 minutes, well, you've got four hours and 45 minutes plus or minus 15 minutes. They will also tell you how long it takes them to charge to full when you put them in the charger, the overall cycle count and the health of the battery, milliamp hours, the current state of the battery. So it's a fully reliable and functional first touring grade rechargeable system for radio mics. Um, and as you can imagine, you know, just time saving. Take a major West End production that has 60 to 80 channels of radio mics on there. The amount of time when two times a day you're taking the double A's or triple A's out, putting new ones in, you know, to change these on the packs. There you go. Click one out. Click a new one in. Done. You're ready to go. And, you know, I suppose I could go on about being environmentally friendly, etc., etc. You know, imagine the amount of double A's a show or, a, you know, a world tour with a major band goes through as well. So um, I think I'm probably close to the end of my 10 minutes. But as you can see, there's, there's many levels of innovation. I wish I could even touch on, you know, even the Spectrum Manager, but I think I'm kind of out of time. So do you have, do you have any questions? Any questions? What's the maximum number of channels you can run <laughs> before the, they start hopping and interfering with themselves? Uh, well, it's impossible for that to happen because these units are all networked together and coordinated together. Uh, in fact, these units are networked to our in-ear and other wireless systems here as well. All of our radio mics and systems are able to talk to one another across an internet or an ethernet connection. So these aren't going to interfere with one another because if I use the spectrum manager to find new frequencies, it'll know exactly how many channels I need, where are my, I can even put postal data in and say my postal code is, you know, a London postal code will know what active TV stations are in there. So it's, it will never happen. What about if you've got, uh, say you're operating a particular band, you, yeah. you build up your, your bandwidth with yeah. the maximum amount of radio mics you can use. Yeah. What happens if you get interference? You can't jump anywhere. Well, you'll have coordinated that as an RF engineer. 
you know, and this will all come, you know, if you're planning a large television show, you know, and it is a reality we face, you know, spectrum is limited, but you're going to get so many channels in, I'd, I'd be curious to find a show with the amount of channels where that would happen. But the, the channel count you can squeeze in to set bandwidth, yeah. is it because of the reduced bandwidth of the audio? Uh, no, 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 not because of the reduced bandwidth of the audio, by, by no means. In fact, the audio performance of Axiom has been further improved to UHFR. Noise floor, transient response, dynamic range is further improved. It has to do with simply the RF specifics of the transmitter and the receiver. So on the transmitter, the actual linearity, so when you take the carrier signal, it typically has a given bandwidth when you look at this on a scope. And then when you throw many on air, these always interact with another and cause intermod products. You know, much like harmonics of a musical note and fundamentals. Radio mics are very much the same way. All of this filtering has been improved to such levels that we're able to cram these channels a lot closer to one another before the information from one carrier to another one starts to spill over. But not just on the transmitter, it's on the receiver end as well. You know, the, the selectivity of the filtering in here is something that, you know, we can't see in any product. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with operation of radio mics, you know, if you use them daily, but just as a reference point, this channel here is tuned to 651.400 meg. I'm going to tune this one and I'll show this to you. So you actually believe me. I'll tune this 200K off. So that's 651. 600 yeah. there you go so i'm 200k off of this actual carrier and i don't get any rf leds on that do this with even our uhfr or any other system out there you'll probably get four or five leds and audio passing through that's just how rf equipment works to be able to tune something 200k off of a carrier frequency not only is impressive but also allows you to then cram because of the receiver is so good at filtering unwanted noise that allows us to increase that channel count.